But now the time is three minutes past ten. Time to open the door on Bernie Clifton's comedy shop. <laughs> festival last year and four hippies were taken to hospital with head injuries after drinking milk. The cow sat down. <laughs> My brother went to the dog's home. He says, uh, is this the dog's home, sir? And I says, it is. You see, can I help you? He says, yes, sir. I'd like a blind dog for me mother-in-law, please. <laughs> so he says, well, this is a blind dog. So you mean a guide dog, don't you? He says, no, sir, a blind dog. If it's sour, it would go for her. <laughs> the runs on the promenade on black girl, he shouted, There's a lion escaped from the zoo! There's a lion escaped from the zoo! I said, which way did he go? He said, you don't think we're chasing it, do you? <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Comedy Shop. And on the show tonight, we were to have talked to Police Sergeant Fred Thompson on self-defence. But while we were asking Sergeant Thompson what made him so expert on the subject, his wife came in and threw him out the window. <laughs> we do have an important message for people who live in Bolton. Hard luck. <laughs> we shall meet the man who celebrated his silver wedding by throwing a party for over a hundred guests and giving his wife the surprise of her life. He didn't invite her. I shall interview a man who is engaged, but his fiancée doesn't understand him. That's nothing. I'm married and my wife doesn't understand me. What are you talking about? I'm Irish and nobody can understand me. <laughs> and this week's special guest is a woman whose hair reaches down to her waist. Yet the other arm bit is completely normal. <laughs> we hope to meet the assistant to the manager of the gents' toilets at Paddington Station will tell us why he dislikes being referred to as number two. And we should be asking the question, when a man goes round knocking at people's doors, desperately hoping someone will recognize him, is it amnesia or is it Russell Harkin? We also hope to do a special feature on video nasty. Uh, by the way, Pop, do you want to buy a video nasty? What's it called? The Sound of Music. What's nasty about that? The dog's been sick on it. <laughs> and we haven't forgotten competition time, so thinking caps on and guess the odd one out from the following. Angus McClure, Jimmy McKenzie, Alistair McFarlane and Taffy Evans. <laughs> You've guessed it, Jimmy McKenzie. <laughs> all the others are bald. <laughs> and seeing you all got that right, here's another. Guess the odd word out. Green, blue, and embarrassing. That's right, green. The other two describe Bernard Manning. And now, what's on? Your comedy shop entertainment guy. <laughs> At the Garrick Theatre, the longest running farce in the West End continues with No Sex Please, We're British. And across the road at the Alternative Theatre, a brand new show starring Brit Eklund. More Sex Please, We're Swedish. At the Majesty Theatre, the amazing musical with a cast made up entirely of children, Bugsy Malone. Tickets six pounds, five pounds, and four pounds. Adults are price. <laughs> and glamorous film and television star Joan Collins reported to be considering two alternative offers of work for next year. One is for $2 million to star in the new series of Dynasty. The other is for 40 pounds a week to play Widow Twanky at West Hartlepool. <laughs> her reason says she is still undecided. On ITV, there's a new series of It Will Be All Right on the Night, the program that brings you the funny mistakes that get cut out of other shows. This week, Dennis Norton introduces an entire episode of Crossroads. <laughs> and next week, BBC One begins a new series of horror programmes with a different, creepy classic every night, starting on Monday with Frankenstein. On Tuesday, the Russell Harty Show returns. <laughs> and Russell gives his audience a treat by flying to America. On Wednesday, he spoils it by coming back again. <laughs> And 
now it's time for Comedy Shop's Adventure Serial, El Bandido. Where the wicked Pat Mooney. That's me, folks. Where the wicked Pat Mooney tries to kill off our hero, El Bandido, who is defended and protected by the wonderful Bernie Clifton. That's me, folks. This week's episode, Where There's Muck. Freedom was his name. Vengeance was his game. Justice was his name. And his name was El Bandido. Right, Clifton, I'm ready. El Bandido! 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 You can wait as long as you like this week, Clifton, because this week it's curtains. What color? Oh, you know. Very funny. Oh, yes, very funny, Clifton. <laughs> Let's have a good laugh. Curtains, what color? <laughs> Glad you like it. Oh, hope you know plenty of funeral jokes. Why, aren't you feeling well? Not for me, Clifton, for El Bandido. Oh, is he going to a funeral? He will be soon. Oh, you better tell him to polish his black shoes then. Anyway, aren't you going to start? We haven't got all day, you know. El Bondido certainly hasn't. Our story starts on a hot, steamy day in Mexico. He had the deadly aim. <laughs> he loved the killing game. In Panto, he played game. All the same. To El Bandido. Very good, Clinton. Have you quite finished? Uh-huh. Right. There was a strange eeriness in the streets. It was as if everyone knew this was to be El Bandido's last day on earth. Oh, is he going on his holiday? A mere half a mile away, the evil Crabtree twins lurked behind the railway station. Oh, he's going on his holiday. Suddenly, Black Jake appeared, carrying a heavy sack over his shoulders. Inside the sack was the unconscious body of El Bandido. Oh, that's ridiculous, Mooney. El Bandido wouldn't let Black Jake put him in a sack. He would have been paralytic drunk. Ah! Got you, Mooney. Al Bandido doesn't drink. Black Jake and the Crab Tree Twins, disguised as three Salvation Army girls, lured him down to the dog and ferret. He doesn't drink. He does when three people are holding his mouth open. I see. So you're playing dirty. They poured down his throat three bottles of whiskey, two bottles of gin, a bottle of vodka, and a crate of light ale. Was he slurring his words? <laughs> he was more than slurring his words, Clifton. Yeah, he would be. How on earth did they get him off the ceiling? You can joke, Clifton, just wait till you hear what happens next. They took El Bandido's unconscious body and tied it across the railway line just in time for the 10.26. Hey, that's a silly thing to do. He could get hurt. That's the idea, Clifton. Uh, and they used proper string to tie him with. Steel cord. Steel cord? Down his ankles and neck. Round his ankles and especially his neck. Hmm. And Black Jake and the Crabtree twins were sitting there thinking that they'd got him. There's no thinking about it, Clifton. When that 10.26 thunders down the track, El Bandido is in three pieces. Hmm. Pretty easy to call the El Humble. Then he'd be in the three-piece suites. <laughs> you get it? That's very funny, Clifton. Come on. Don't waste time. Get out of it. So, El Bandido, back to the track, waiting for the 10.26. Correct. And it's 10.25 already. So we haven't got long then. Just a minute. Why, where are you going? Oh, I see what you mean. I think we're going to have to over-dramatise this again, Mr. Guitar Man. Thank you. They thought everything was fine. But in 1959, Dr. Beeching closed the line. He was fine. With El Bandido. I don't believe this. El Bandido, El Bandido, El Bandido, El Bandido, El Bandido, El Bandido, El Bandido. I'm not playing with you again, Clifton. El Bandido. Comedy Shop's great fun quiz, Where Am I Now? 
Let's join our outside broadcasting unit somewhere in England and our intrepid reporter, Fred Harkin. Well, thank you, Tony. <laughs> And a big hello from me, Fred Arpick, back once again, thanks to the wonderful lads from the Air Sea Rescue after last week's little mishap. Anyway, where am I now this week will really tax your powers of deduction, because I'm almost in the dark. A few seconds before you join me, some very nice men lowered me feet first into what I could only describe as a metal tube. It's just wide enough to take my body, and if I look up, I can see blue sky out at the end of the tube. <laughs> Actually, I think the tilt in the tube can still see the sky, and now the tops of houses. Oh, and now what appears to be a sort of a big rope nest. <laughs> oh, they've stopped tilted the tube, but I can still see the rope nest out at the end. Well, this is a puzzle. <laughs> oh, it's gone dark. Oh, oh, somebody's pushed something down the tube, and they're pushing it against me head. As though they're making sure my feet are touching the bottom. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> They've taken the pusher out, and I can see the rope net again. Maybe we're going fishing. <laughs> anyway, it's gone very quiet. Oh, now that was interesting. Did you hear it? It was just like somebody striking a match. <laughs> Probably the one of the men having a cigarette. Well, jot your answer down and post it to Where Am I Now? BBC Manchester. And don't forget... nightclub are likely to be saved from redundancy thanks to a Knightsbridge casino owner. He says he could use their topless waitresses and particularly want to get his hands on their bouncers. <laughs> the organisers of this year's Brain of Ireland competition have asked that all entries be clearly marked with the sender's name and address. This follows reports that some of last year's brains were returned to the wrong people. <laughs> What's wrong with that? said that the planned strike by sandwich makers would not affect services as they still had last year's supply in stock. And a van loaded with fertility drugs has crashed into a London sperm bank, causing widespread crowds. <laughs> At a function organised in aid of the Shoreditch Society for the very short-sighted today, a cold salad buffet was laid on, two trifles were sat on and three banana splits were trodden on. Auditions to find the new James Bond have started, and the surprising applicant this week was Rochdale MP Cyril Smith. <laughs> Cyril claims he has changed his appearance dramatically to get the part. He's grown a moustache. <laughs> Mr. Al Gristle, a postman for 50 years who has just delivered his 10 millionth letter, said today it was nothing to write home about. <laughs> and three Soho call girls. We fought each other over a prospective client in a London street last week, where he's fined fifty pounds for bringing the game into disrepute. <laughs> Seamus O'Twitz, the Irish scientist, has slammed underground fallout shelters as useless. He says, if they're buried under the ground, how can anybody fall out of one? <laughs> the same as Irish, I think. And ace conman Charlie Robinson was fined a thousand pounds today after being found guilty of door-to-door -door collecting for the widow of the unknown soldier. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? Well, I hope so. Is this the discreet health care centre? Embarrassing or upsetting her problems treated in strictest confidence? All is welcome. That's right, Baldy. What can we do for you? <laughs> Pardon? Come on, Egghead, we haven't got all day. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> well, I, I come over to your personal hair transplant court. Confidential treatment for the discerning client. Oh, you mean the special deal for Baldis? <laughs> Look, I, I came in here because I thought I would receive a tactful and discreet service to cure a problem I happen to find singularly embarrassing. All right, all right, there's no need to lose your rag just because the moths have been at your conk. 
I'm only doing my job. Well, I must say, I, I do think I'd be seeing slightly more sympathy than this. Couldn't keep your voice down. All right, all right. Now, keep your wig on, Baldy. Now, let's see, you want a hair transplant? Yes. And you want a quiet and discreet service? Yes. Right. Harry! There's another geezer here for the cheap wigs! <laughs> Can you squeeze him in? What's that, John? Baldy here wants a cheap wig. Want a cheap wig, do you, Baldy? <laughs> Look, I can't take any more of this. You, you can stuff your rotten wigs. I'm going. That's the trouble with some folk today. They're so rude. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. This is a story they said would never be made. The story of one man. A man with a belief. A man with a belief that one day he might transpose the mind and soul of an older man into the body of a being half the age. They told him it could not be done, but he would not believe them. Now that man has succeeded. He has taken the mind and soul of a 53-year-old man and placed it inside the body of an 18-year-old boy. The result? Cheggers. <laughs> a spine-chilling tale of an old man trapped in a young man's body. Cheggers, the story of the supernatural. Cheggers, see it in virtually all BBC television programmes now. <laughs> Presents Marriage Line. Look at this slop again. Do you call that a meal, woman? When are you going to learn to cook? You rat bag. It looks like the contents of a fur rate cafe swill bin. I've a good mind to stick it on the wall. Please don't stand up, but you on the table. Yes, Lord. <laughs> You know, Harriet, I feel like doing something really naughty today. Oh, Henry, you are a one. I think it must be the spring. Oh, there's life in the old dog yet, eh, Henry? Oh, yes, there's plenty of life in the old dog, Harriet. Oh, Henry, tell me, what are you going to do that's really naughty? I'm going to alter me will. <laughs> darling. Not now, darling. I, I've got a headache. But you said that last night and the night before. I can't help getting headaches, you know. But the one type mind you have, you seem to think there's nothing else in mind. Oh, come on, darling. You know what makes you feel better? All right, then. Just one. Good. I spy with my little eyes on the top of Yes? Good evening, madam. I'm from Pest Control. Oh, you better come in. He's not from the pub yet. <laughs> Arnold. Yes, Ethel. Did you notice I gave you a, a big piece of steak for your dinner tonight? Yes, I thought. I read somewhere, Arnold, that steak contains protein, and protein makes you big and strong. Mm. Yes, I thought. Are you feeling big and strong, Arnold? Yes, I thought. Oh, yes. Strong enough to carry a helpless woman upstairs. <laughs> yes, Ethel. Yes. Good. Mother's broken her leg and she's coming to stay with us. When I get <laughs> oh, you're home, darling. Oh, I've missed you. I've really missed you. Come and sit down beside me on the settee. I poured you a drink and got your slippers. Come on, take your jacket off. Let me loosen your tie and help you relax. Ah. A darkened room. A 
Frank Sinatra record. The season negligee. You bought the car again, haven't you? <laughs> confession, darling. I, I don't like to tell you, darling. Oh, come along, darling. We don't have any secrets now. Tell me. Whatever it is, I won't mind. I've got a wooden leg. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. When I kept finding sawdust on the floor, I thought the stuffing was coming out of me throat. Just taking a young lad on who demands a new house, a company car changed every year, and he only sells the pies at half time. <laughs> and boxing, the on off meeting between Frank Bruno and Joe Bugner has been going on for so long they've become pen pals. <laughs> and some happy racing news it will be wedding bells for the top national hunt jockey and the lady national hunt jockey very soon. They first met in an open ditch at Kenton Park. <laughs> After 700 consecutive appearances on the substitute bench for the third division club, Digger Mills says he feels as fit as the day he signed. <laughs> and here are a few late football results. Aston Villa 1, Pancho Villa 2. Fulham 2, Emptian 1. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the comedy shop gag bag. Gag bag. I was passing a building site the other day, and I saw this labourer on the scaffold with a hundred weight of bricks in his hod, hopping on one leg. I said, what are you hopping on one leg for? He said, I don't think the plank can take the full weight. My pal Murphy went for a job working on the building site. He said to the foreman, I'd like a job as a navvy. And the foreman said, you look a big strong fella. He says, you can start right away. He says, right, I'll just hang me donkey jacket in this shed. Oh, he says, that's not a shed, that's your hut. <laughs> My boyfriend got a job on a building site. And on his first day, he was pushing his wheelbarrow past the foreman's office. And he had a squeaky wheel and it was going... The foreman came out and said, you're fired. He said, what for? He said, it should be going. <laughs> well, I went to the building site, said, the clerk of works, he said, I'd like to start. He said, go on over the foreman over there, donkey. He went over and said, excuse me. He said, are you a donkey? He said, yeah. He said, what did he call you, donkey? He said, he, all, he, all, he always called me that. <laughs> No one the houses are so expensive. I was passing a building site and there was a hundred fellas screwing a screw into a wall. One of them was holding the screw, another one was holding the screwdriver, and the other 98 were turning the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my pal Morphy, he went for a job at Wimpy's. And uh, he, the foreman said to him, go and fetch me a wheelbarrow. And five minutes later, he comes back with a wheelbarrow on a wheelbarrow. The foreman said, I only wanted one. Murphy says, you didn't expect me to carry it, did you? <laughs> Nick's digging a hole on the site. The foreman came up. He said, Nick, get out the hole. 
Get back in the hole, man. Get out the hole. Get back in the hole. Get out the hole. Get back in the hole. Get out the hole. Get back in the hole. They said, just a minute, what's your game? He said, you bring in more muckets on your wellies than you were with your spade. <laughs> Hannigan was leaving the site on his way to lunch in the pub and the slate fell off the roof and he cut his ear clean off and he thought, well, I've only got an hour for lunch, I'll get it on the way back. <laughs> so he walked in the pub and Murphy said, will you have a drink? He said, no thanks, I've got one here. <laughs> and when they went back after lunch, they're all looking for Hannigan's ear and Murphy says, ear, there's an ear here, Hannigan, is this your ear? Hannigan says, no, mine's got a ciggy behind it. <laughs> He's laid back to work. He's up, he's up four stories up on the scaffold in the form of shadow. Hannigan! Yes, sir. Mr. Pardon? Mr. Hannigan, yes, sir. Mr. Pardon? Hannigan, yes, sir. Mr. Pardon? You don't worry, I'll sex somebody else. <laughs> Me, Caroline Turner. And me, Tony Pierce. And me, Pat Moody. And me, Bernie Clifton. Thanks for coming to the comedy show. It's written by Jeffrey Atkinson, Jim Cass, Joe Dwan, Tony Heath, Richard Jones, Brian McCann, Nick Thomas, David Webb, and John Walker. Brian Pendleton and Bob Gill provided the music. And the comedy shop is produced in Manchester by Mike Gray. <laughs>